We have the A15's graphics performance numbers, and here's what it means for M2. I'm Mike Dave, and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. And if you want the latest Apple news, leaks, and rumors every weekday at 12 UTC, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring my bell. And yes, we have got leaks of the A15 chip's graphics performance numbers, which is what we'll be shipping in the iPhone 13 probably next week, week after that, whatever. We've got an event uh, invite coming today, ready for the 14th. We hope. So Apple Insider is reporting via a Twitter leaker, Fronttron, that the Apple A15, or at least an early SoC from the production around July, has been tested and it appears that the A15 GPU is about 13.7% faster than the A14, which is a decent jump, offering peak scores of 198 frames per second in Manhattan 3.1. For comparison, the Samsung Exynos 2200 with AMD's mRDNAs seems to be peaking around 170 frames per second on the same test. What I found Far more interesting, though, is what happens when this GPU performance is then scaled to what we'd expect in an M2. Now, I'm expecting that the M2 will be the first Max Apple Silicon chip that will use the cores and the GPUs from the A15 generation. And right now, it seems likely that that will launch in the much-rumored redesigned MacBook Air M2, probably in the spring of 2022 and most likely in April or March. Based on Mark Gurman's report that the M2 will be containing 9 to 10 GPU cores, which would presumably be an entry level and a full spec, as with the 7 and 8 core M1 models, a 13.7% core speed bump would actually give nearly 50% faster graphics overall. Now you can check my maths. The M1 scores 21, 168 in Geekbench's metal test. Divide by 8 for the per core score. Multiply by 1.137 and then multiply that result by the 10 cores, giving 30,085. That moves the needle of performance from AMD's RX 550 and GTX 980 Ti's right up to the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti territory and the Radeon Pro 570. Very respectable for an integrated graphics solution going into a thin and light and most surprisingly fanless laptop. It's worth bearing in mind of course that Nvidia cards aren't particularly well optimised for metal though. Regardless of the comparisons though, the M1 right now is pretty capable and a 42.1% speed increase, which is what it actually works out to, which is, is nothing to be sniffed at generation over generation. Though the M1X with 16 or 32 core GPUs, albeit using A14 generation cores, will still be much much faster than the M2 and we could see those as soon as next week fingers crossed in other news there's an updated model number for Apple's MagSafe chargers just added to the FCC database and that is a 2548. It's thought that this new version of the charger could feature stronger magnets for attachment and alignment, although there was some controversy and concern over the iPhone 12's magnets being strong enough to affect pacemakers and other electronic health hardware. There is a possibility, of course, that Apple is addressing that issue by moving more of the magnetism to the charger or the external MagSafe component like the case and minimizing the amount of magnetic force on the iPhone side of the pairing making it more of a passive partner in the interface. It's also possible, of course, that Apple could be increasing the maximum charge rates or even including some sort of pairing so that data connections can become possible over MagSafe, perhaps with the NFC identifier that tells the iPhone, for example, what color a case is that's being added, could actually be working as a handshake that will set up an ad hoc Wi-Fi connection between the iPhone and MagSafe, which could be the perfect way around having a portless iPhone that could still work with wired CarPlay solutions, for example or connecting otherwise wired peripherals like microphones, audio interfaces, and that kind of thing. So what would you want to see added to a MagSafe accessory before you'd be happy with a truly portless iPhone? Maybe something like a smart connector inside. And finally, before your questions, VMware has also announced that they will no longer pursue ESXi compatibility and support for the 2019 Mac Pro models. Another nail in the coffin for Intel Macs, but also a kick in the teeth for people that bought those expensive machines. ESXi is the bare metal hypervisor tech that installs directly onto servers to kind of partition the hardware allowing as I understand it the server to run multiple virtual machine instances that a number of different users can use uh, simultaneously over the network. So it's a bit of a pain but VMware is also owned by Dell so is anyone really that surprised that they're not heavily investing in supporting the Mac platform. We didn't need you anyway. Of course the biggest news of the day is going to be uh, the Apple event invites and everyone trying to work out what on earth they mean. So as soon as that drops, I'll try to get the news out as quickly as I can. 
Failing that, the biggest news of the day will probably be why there isn't a September 14th event if they don't turn up. <laughs> so, right into your questions. Evan Rogers asks, IK Vances, what are your plans for a live stream on iPhone day? And also, Josh asks, IK Vances, are you going to do a live video? when the Apple event happens. So yes, we will be planning to do live videos again. Uh, the plan is that I will be probably doing a post game video as usual where we go live as soon as the event finishes because that seems to be the best way for me at least because everyone will be rushing to make their videos and get them uploaded whereas if we do a live stream we can chat about it straight away as soon as it finishes now fingers crossed i should have a co-host for that um more to be revealed uh, very soon and at the moment i'm not doing anything pre-show so if anyone is particularly excited about that and wants to have me as a guest on their pre-show stream I would be more than happy to do that. Next up, Lars Anderson asks, IK Vances, will the rear camera's larger sensor on the top tier iPhone 13 make better night photos only, or will they have greater resolution and optical zoom? So right now, Apple seems to be quite happy with 12 megapixels, basically the resolution of the images that they do. And I think that's the right call because if they were to go to higher resolution cameras, uh, i.e. more megapixels, that means that each pixel has to be smaller. Basically, you divide your sensor up into a number of pixels. You're measuring the wavelength and number of uh, photons that hit each pixel, gathering light in order to make a good picture. So the bigger your buckets are, the bigger your pixels are, the more consistent your image is going to be across everything. Um, the smaller each of those little buckets is, the less consistent you're going to have the light across it, which is basically what we end up with as noise in photos. So what Apple does is put bigger pixels in there, there's less of them, but it means that it'll average out really nicely and give you a lot less noise in your images, which basically makes them look a lot nicer. Yes, because the more... Because the more pixels you have to every image, the bigger your file size will be as well. You don't necessarily get a better image. You get more detail potentially in the images, but you will also get so much more noise that they become almost unusual, unusable. And what Apple is trying to do is basically make the best looking images that they can with a sensor of the size it is. Remember that these sensors are way, way, way smaller than anything in a DSLR camera, which is why Apple has to do all the trickery with um, computational photography, um, smart HDR and all that sort of thing, taking multiple frames, which they then uh, fuse together to give the best possible image. So that's kind of the way that Apple is focusing. They're not aiming to do more optical zoom potentially, although it looks like next year's iPhones may well have a periscope based camera where they can actually put a bit more depth to the lens stack by bouncing it off a mirror at the top. Dagur asks, IK Vances, iPad mini going to be rebranded as iPad Air mini? So this is something that I was going to kind of go, oh no, absolutely not, they'll definitely call it iPad mini, but having looked at some of the stuff that's out there at the moment, specifically some of the uh, rumors that are coming from Sam Cole and Luke Miani, um, it does look like it might not be branded as an iPad Air mini, although that's obviously what everyone's gonna call it forever, um, but, iPad Air 8.5 inch or something along those lines. So you'd have a 10.9 and an 8.5 inch iPad Air and then an 11 inch and a 12.9 inch iPad Pro uh, and then iPad as your base level, which I really still think they should rename as the iPad SE because it just makes more sense because it is basically older hardware in an older style packaging. It's not current generation hardware. It just makes sense to call it that in terms of clarity, I think, because at the moment, your iPhone 12 and your iPhone 12 Pro are both very much the current generation. The iPad is very much older generation, like the iPhone SE. Just makes sense to call it an SE. Gadget Lab at Gadget Lab Tweets asks, IK Vances, everyone's saying that the M1X MacBook Pro will be coming in October or November. Why are you still thinking that it will be September? My thoughts on this is that the iPhones and Apple Watches have all been registered at the same time as these MacBook Pros in terms of the EEC database. Now, we didn't see anything for the iPads, but it looks like they may have actually been registered even earlier, but we've also not heard of anything about the iPad minis being in production right now. Um, we haven't heard hardware leaks coming from behind the scenes. We haven't seen anything like that. Whereas we have been hearing that the MacBook Pros were having 
production issues with the mini LED displays and then moving past that that this would be when they would be released and then we got that registration at the same time as the iPhones and the watches so for me it still makes sense to do it in September and I do think that Apple wants to get as many eyes on the Mac as possible because at the moment the Mac is kind of the niche uh, side of things whereas the iPhone is the mainstream one and I think if they could get some mainstream eyes on the Mac that would make a lot of sense I don't think that Apple would worry about the iPhone overshadowing the Mac. I don't think that's what would happen because at the same at the same time they also uh, in April talked about the new iMacs at the same time as the new iPad Pros. They they build the iPad Pro as being the headliner because it's probably more mainstream even than Macs right now and I don't think Apple has any worries about mixing different product categories at events. I don't think for them it's not something that people will buy an iPhone or a Mac. If you're buying a Mac, you're probably an iPhone user. Randomness R asks, iCave answers, do you think that the AirPods 3 will get spatial audio and longer battery life? That's all I care about. I've had the first gen AirPods and the battery life is crap now. Also, when do you think Apple will release a notchless iPhone? 2024, 2025. I just bought an iPhone 11 Pro Max for 512 for $800. Got an awesome deal and I love this big size. Waiting for a notchless to upgrade from the 11 Pro. Thanks for the show and keep up the good work. Wunderbar. So let's take them one at a time. Spatial audio in AirPods 3. Yes, I think that's coming. Longer battery life. Definitely longer than, I'm guessing, four-year-old AirPods. The battery life on AirPods is pretty good in the first place to be entirely honest with you but yes they will degrade over time just like anything else that you charge up does but at the moment i think i've had mine for like three years and i still get four hours of just direct listening time out of them without putting them back in the case it still charges really quickly i've really had no issues with battery life on them and then moving on to notchless iphones uh there's there's rumors that it could be next year i would be surprised if they went to a slightly smaller notch this year after what four years with the larger notch and then just did away with it completely next year they're always going to need for having face id to have stuff at the top of that screen whether they can hide it under the display or not is the question i guess um and we will see uh there are rumors that they could go to a hole punch next year doesn't sound very apple to me but maybe they will but i'm not convinced and i'm also not bothered by the notch but anyway Thank you ever so much, guys, for watching. Don't forget, we're probably going to have our invites today, so uh, keep your eyes peeled. I will put out some information on that as soon as I can get it and as soon as I can get a video up, and I will probably uh, do my best to be one of the first on YouTube. We will see. And I will probably be out and about working and trying to squeeze in. But anyway, thank you so much, guys, and we'll see you in tomorrow's show, probably with some invites to discuss.